Welcome to another Jerry's Live After Party. This one on oil painting mediums and altering textures. Very exciting stuff. Uh, hopefully you've just joined us from our uh, Facebook Live on the Jerry's Autorama Facebook page on, uh, well, Facebook, um, where we've kind of gone into depth about what these things are all about. But the point of this is to demonstrate, right? Yeah, definitely. All right, Amy. To, de to demonstrate... I mean, we've gone through these online, but virtually how many products are made by different companies that are almost exactly the same? So rather than we've talked about all of them, break it down into just kind of the groups yeah, and let's... kind of so people can see what they're really like. Because you can read descriptions all day long, but until you actually see the thinness or the thickness or kind of how it is with paint mixed in, that's, you know, mm -hmm. and you know what, that's the one thing I forgot was the paint. What, what was that? <laughs> We don't have any paint set out. We don't have any paint? No, no. We're going to cut and get some paint because Amy forgot I to guess. set up paint because she's been so busy with the medium. That's just the, the one thing. Oh, we don't Do have we any got paint. any paint anymore? We don't. Wow. Okay, well, we've got our paint now. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that, Amy. So now we can get started. It's been three hours since we last uh, met you. Okay, so where do we get started? All right, so first we're going to talk about fat over lean because this was something that was really difficult to just show we, mm -hmm. we've discussed it but to make the point of I guess for people to understand it in a much easier context so this is this is what I'm gonna do because this is the easiest to me right okay so Chelsea makes the fat over lean medium right they make fat, a fat medium and a lean fat medium lean it's like fat it's like oil mediums for dummies, yeah. really, because it and, and not to, you know, make make fun of anybody, but if you're not sure, this is really rather than trying to portion things out and look mm -hmm. up recipes online and, and take a lot of time and effort researching something, you've just It also prevents you from going too lean or too fat. Yes. You know, because it's these are not just, you know, like a solvent and a and a linseed oil. These are well right. balanced. Right. Um, perfectly balanced. Now you can you can take a little bit of the lavender, um, spike lavender essence, okay. thin this down just slightly more. Mm -hmm. You can add a little bit of oil to make it slightly oilier before you get to this point. So there's still some room that For you can play. play, but you really don't have to. So lean medium is what you'd be doing your underpainting, your foundational painting with kind of after you get your color in. Now, I mean, that's very watery, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and, and as these go in, you'll see because there's the lavender in them that it will break down because that lavender starts breaking down sure. the oil. Now the fat medium, you can see is slightly darker. That's because it's got more linseed in it. See how that's not splashing and splatting and going mm -hmm. everywhere. That's got, um, you know, some Damar in it. It's got the oil. Now to go even fatter, you'd be using straight oil. Right. Right. There's no solvent in it to, to thin it down. So at that point, after your fat medium, your top layers are going to have more oil or, or mediums with a lot thicker oil. So this obviously much fatter, right? And you can see it in the bottom right. of the glass. You can see that, that oil, as it goes in, the fat kind of- Rises to the top. Yeah, kind of coagulating there. But very quickly, it's starting to break down because the lavender is very um, successful solvent. Then something like stand oil. Which is thickened. So thickened, yes. It's either either by sun or, you know, chemical process. You've, you've got that, and there's some people that will, these are usually used in painting mediums because they are very thick. Gosh, let me, oh, I think I got it. I mean, it, I would have just embarrassed myself. You might get to. <laughs> I might get to? Are you greasy? I, no, I, but I will say that I have had hand surgeries, so it's hard for me to get. Oh my God, grip. I've never felt so masculine. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I got that for you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I, mean, I guess. Pour the fat in. Yes. Let's see, watch how much slower that is. Ooh, it's like honey. Yes. And then look what that looks like in the bottom of that. You like, can see it starting to break down. Looks like honey. <laughs> It's starting to smell wonderful. Well, I think I like the smell of linseed oil. I, I like the smell of, I so, mean, when you walk into an art supply store, it has yes, a smell to yes, it. Yes, it does. You know, you know they're in a real yes. art supply store. Okay, now to take that even, so that's 
that would be if you're adding a little bit of this to your paint what that's going to do is is give just like so much depth and clarity and and color it would you know really float that in but you're also adding drying time that's going to be maybe in a humid area up to 18 months yep um, i've had paintings that we used just doing around the office to <clears> show <throat> stand oil being used in a top layer that literally 17 months later you could go like that there's still a fingerprint in it yeah what? so that's that's which is fine it was in the top layers but then you're also going to have to deal with what that does in the top layer then this is kind of the mac daddy of, of slow and this is usually used in painting mediums but i'm just just to prove the point of fat You don't want to use that in your lower layers, okay? That is fat. I can see the chunk yes. just sitting on the bottom of that. That's Venice turpentine. Venetian turpentine. Well, they it's Italian. say Venice. Well, you know what I mean. Because it's Sennelier. You're not saying it's snooty enough, probably, for the, for the French. Not but, bully. But, but you can see it's all just sitting on the bottom right there. So that's going to be the longest drawing. Those thicker ones, it's it, just think of thick and thin, like when you're making salad dressing. It's it's a much easier concept than people mm -hmm. want to make it some crazy mystery and, and difficult. If you're not sure, break it down into just doing this. Right. And, you know, this is a kind of, for whatever reason, very complex concept for some people. Uh, we did an artist problem, which is yes. on the our YouTube channel mm -hmm. called uh, Artist Problems Fat Over Lean, mm -hmm. where uh, I get kind of go into this a little bit more and, you know, generally make an ass of myself. <clears throat> it's what you do. It's what I do best. It is. Yeah. It is. All right. So we're going to talk about some traditional glazing mediums, just so people can see these in use. Okay. Cool. We've got uh, the Damar glazing medium uh, that Michael Harding makes. Traditionally, this is made with a cobalt siccative. So which you're is using... A dryer. It, it is. It's a dryer made out of, of metallic salts. So okay. it's it's something where if you're new to painting, you it's buy things like this. Don't make them yourselves because it's like one, two, drops. three drops yep. in a formulation. Now, I mean, they put that in because with the Damar and the oil, it would be very slow drying otherwise. So this is going to be more of a fatty medium as a result, sure. but it's got some drying in it, so it's going to, to dry quicker. Um, we've got um, an oleo resin medium that has um, Canadian balsam with Damar resin and linseed stand oil, which is the stand oil was what we were using. Now, I mean, it's got turpentine in it, so it breaks it down just kind of like in our cup. Slowly, this is starting to turn kind of one color. There's yep. a little bit of residual at the bottom, which when we made that medium that time. It sat at the bottom, but then slowly broke down a couple days later. And it, was, it was fine and ready to use. Um, so this, this with that resin in it makes like super depth and clarity and like just beautiful color. Then we've got the balsam resin glazing medium. That has Australian larch turpentine, the Damar resin and the linseed stand oil, which who knew that so many different types of turpentine are going to produce so many different, different results, right. but it, but it does. Um, that's just added to thin the film and enhance kind of gloss luster color. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some of these little cups just to see. And you can put pick a color and kind of put it over here. And this is something that's very mysterious to a lot of people. They don't know how to add medium to paint either. Good. It's actually a pretty color. Yeah, I know. It looks like baby food squash. I'm it's, sure you're very, I'm very familiar, familiar, with. <laughs> familiar with that. Hope I don't eat it. Yes. All right. Let's try the... Now, have you ever put um, not used glazing medium at all? I have, but um, back when I was in school, not okay. recently. All right. And definitely with acrylics. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Doesn't count. No, it doesn't, doesn't count. count. Okay, so when you're when you're adding this kind of stuff, you're gonna want to touch the brush in it to just kind of wet it, and you work your paint into the film kind of however you want it, you know, thin or thick. But see how that that makes a really nice, mm -hmm. very shiny luster. So that's how we're gonna do that, and then we'll just kind of do them on the side, just kind of paint a swatch, um, okay. and we'll label them. And so then when 
because this is done in advance. Right. When we go to do the actual Facebook Live show, we'll have it, it'll be dried, so it'll be this beautiful, you'll be able to see the luster and the depth. This is some weird Back to the Future stuff. I know. Doing. In the past, Only we you. filmed this, which you're gonna see first. You did drive in on a skateboard hoverboard, right? A skateboard hoverboard, and right. Listening puffy, to Huey puffy. Lewis in the news. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. What's with the life preserver? All right, so label that, just the MH, uh, Michael Harding, M.H. Yep, Damar Glaze Medium. I'll set these other ones up for you while you're doing that. Okay, go ahead and just paint, paint yourself a patch under there. Now, you know, there's turpentine in them, but smell, it's not like overwhelming. Not overwhelming. Okay, the reason for this is, and we, and we talked about this on our, um, our episode for safety, is that it's because it, the, the fumes go so much slower because it's connected with all the oils and things like that. Right. So actually the aromatic uh, stuff that's in it releases at a much slower level. So A, it's not as harmful for you to use in painting as just if you had straight turpentine open to clean your brushes. Right. And um, you know, B, you're not using this all the time so you can keep a little cap on it. Okay, cap that's, this? that's good, yes. Just so we've, now this one with the balsam resin is stronger. Okay, now you're gonna do MH Folio Resin Medium. Okay. Now should I pull the paint down in a slightly different pile than I have? Or um, it's up to you. It's however you would like to do it. Make, Dana, did you rinse your brush no, out? Not from, yet. Rinse, rinse it out and then blot it really good so that you're not getting the transfer. Because if it's our, that brush is so absorbent, being kind of a mongoose style brush, it will still have a lot in there that it will come out then. Essence of mongoose. Yes. Okay. Love it, lavender smell. All right, so this is the oleo. Mm -hmm. And then take that kind of off a different side so that yep. you're not. That's, see, that's very, even more luminous. It is, and just um, put, put it down. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one's known for imparting a higher gloss level. So you can really see that. See, it's the same color, but look at how much more rich it, yeah. it is. All right. I'll take this and cap that. Then this is going to be the next one. You're going to write down the balsam resin. You can just put balsam resin glaze. And really, when you, when you buy are buying new mediums and you're trying new things, it's really good to do kind of a test patch of it against something that you've already got. Mm -hmm. A, you're gonna see how long it dries, right? Mm -hmm. it takes right. to dry, so you have some idea kind of behind the behind the scenes um, how it compares to something else you're using. B, you're gonna be able to see what are the characteristics that make this very different than something I may already be using. Right. So you know, this is the time I want to grab this particular medium. This is the time that maybe this isn't what I'm looking for. Um, especially on dry times because you're using that to determine then kind of which is more fat and which is more lean, which is going to help you in different, wow, that's like really, yeah. that's really nice. It, it really improved the, the flow mm -hmm. and the, uh, mm -hmm. the long stroke. Yep. Okay. All right, so there are those, now we're gonna try, um, Sonelia has a, a more of the traditional Turner painting <clears throat> medium, which this has the Damar gum in it, which what that is is to, to make something kind of more luminous and, and you know, bright. Um, it says it reinforces the cohesion of the brush stroke. So I'm guessing that it's probably gonna perform very much like this, where oh, it's yeah. gonna kind of keep that brush stroke in there. You don't see as much kind of the thinner yep. nature as you do with those other two. 
Um, and then you can thin this with odorous, odorless mineral spirits or turpentine, which it, it smells like it's got turp in it. I would always err on whatever is in it as opposed yeah. to putting in something, something that's... Different. Yeah, so you're going to write down, um, just put S-E-N period um, Turner medium. Okay. Now we're gonna pull from the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just kind of pull it and move my pile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Always moving the pile. All right. Ooh. See, that performs very much very like that similar. balsam resin, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see that that's, ooh, it smells good too. Good. We'll <laughs> save this for later. <laughs> for later. It's lunchtime. Okay. Time for now, lunch. Now, don't let this kind of goopiness fool you on this. Um, this is... I say that all the time. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gamblin's Neo Mel Megilp. Meglip. Meglip. Neo look Meglip. At the, look at the, the. But everybody says Neo Meglip. I know, but it's I mean, gilp. It's, it's gilp. I, I don't. I don't know why. Neo Meglip. Um, now it looks chunky and thick. That's that's what it's supposed to look like. It's thick citropic. So when you actually are using your brush, and let's we'll put it over here, and uh, you'll need to write that down uh, as well. Gamblin. Yes. Um, the thick citropic nature will make it more fluid as you're using it as a painting medium so that it's going to, to thin down. It won't be quite as thin as those other ones, but it's still relatively thin. It's going to give that rich, deep glow. Um, it won't darken or crack over time, which depending on how much you're really using these and if you're being very heavy and not using as much paint with them, you could potentially have that happen. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so this is kind of their modernized version of So I'm actually going to pull this. That. There you go. Oh, look at you. I, I was wondering problems what this little... On a Monday. Hey, uh, usually I don't solve problems what? until Fridays. I know. Every other Friday on our YouTube channel. <laughs> oh. Um, that's a little plug for you. It, that's, yes. Uh, you know, I was wondering just before we started filming what good this is and look at me. Uh, look answered at your me. own question, didn't you? Just look at me. This is weird. Look at how thick... You don't expect it. You expect it to be chunky because it's uh, kind of chunky. I, yeah, but it's not. No, it, it's, and look how thin and really. That's very vibrant, isn't it? It is. Let's let's put it down here. See, you don't know until you try them, or you've seen somebody try them, or maybe a, an instructor has had them in a class. Just kind of wipe the excess out of this first before you put that in there. So, that's another alternative to kind of a. What well, looks like a very untraditional medium because mm -hmm. it looks just kind of uh, very similar to a thicker liquid or right. a gel medium, um, performs like a very traditional medium. Okay, so those are kind of now, as we've already said on the show, those are just a sampling of <coughs> everybody and their brother makes versions of some of these. And and you'll find things. that there's only just it takes a very trained eye to tell the difference yes you know so you just you know if you find something that you like you know if you look at just the the last root we put down i don't know if uh you know i could make this look more like that just by thinning it out a little bit more I, you know it's just mm -hmm. they, they do similar stuff and we're using organic material right and so so it's just kind of like this <clears throat> trying some things and seeing now the the beauty of the Michael Harding stuff comes in some little tiny sizes. You don't have to get a gallon. Yeah, so it's it's a way to try some of the more traditional, and he makes them still in the traditional methods, mm -hmm. versus something much more modern that's production made. Right. Um. So now we're going to go into the alkyd based mediums, oh. and people are. This is is, in some ways, it's great. In some ways, because it's the not. things that that they do, yes, and in some ways they're not because alkyd is made out of their petroleum distillates right number one which I mean that's not a bad thing within itself they put metallic dryers in a lot of them to get them to dry faster because by nature they don't dry 
alkyds? Mm -hmm. I always was told that alkyd oil paints are fast drying oil paints. Well, they are, but it's alkyds put into them. Uh -huh. And what is actually in the, the alkyd itself that makes it fast drying, right? I see. Alkyd is a f combination of alcohol and an acid. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a plastic. So you're adding something that's not a traditional thing to a traditional medium okay. to, to uh, enhance, I mean, you can enhance the, the film texture, <coughs> right? Your paint film, so you can make it thinner, thicker, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But you're also um, potentially getting some issues with darkening over time if you add too much. This is, and this is where it becomes dangerous because it's, a very, it's an inexpensive medium, so it's great for the pocketbook but it's a medium that a lot of people don't take the time to either kind of have somebody that knows how to use them explain properly. Mm -hmm. So they just goop it on because they're you know worried about drying, drying, drying faster, faster, faster. That's not always a good thing over five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, you know. So it's, it's one of those things that just because it's less expensive and there's so many products out there doesn't mean you still probably shouldn't learn how to use them. Right. Okay. So, they make different varieties. So they make ones that are called light and fine detail that are gonna be much thinner. All right, so here's a fine detail. We'll just use the, the Windsor Nathan version for a, let's take this and put this over here and we'll get a board that's all alkyd. Cool. Just for you. So liquid fine detail. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm gonna write alkyds over here. You can just put W in. We all know what it means. All right. Uh, now, put some new uh, color. Yeah, sure. Shame, shame. Want something like. Ooh, mm. phthalo green. This has got a high tinting strip. Mm. Ooh, look at you. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'll surprise you. Um, let me do something different than I did last time. I'm going to do a little, like, kind of worm. Sure. Thing, so I can <laughs> the worm. I'm going to do the worm. Yes. Okay. It's going to be like. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, now, if you can paint that way, I'll be so impressed. All right. Yeah, and when you do that, make sure you blot a lot of that out of your. Yep tissue just so it's only the medium that you're picking up with that. Okay, and I've put that right in here. In here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. See how that it really thins it down. You can get, for, for detail work, if you really need to have it be where you can get really fine lines. You know, obviously we're using a thick brush, which, I mean, that's fine. What we're looking for is the stroke and the controllability. That seems very controllable. Right, and people use Liquin because A, it speeds up drying time. Yes. And B, it also improves uh, the gloss and yes. the flow. Um, well, depending on the type of Liquin, it can right. improve the flow. So the fine detail is gonna have the thinnest viscosity. Right. And then they've got, you know. Now, and, and just, just like with other things, just because one brand's version is called Liquin, doesn't mean this is the only alkyd. These are all alkyds that are out here. Right. All these pastes that we're gonna be using when we do the impasto stuff <clears throat> are alkyds. They're just different versions of it. There's even, uh, with some of the manufacturers, a natural alkyd. I mean, they, they, they call it liquid glaze. What that is, is rather than some of the things like the, like the um, solvents and things like that in it, They've engineered the safflower oil to work with the alkyd itself where you don't have the distillates in sure. it. So that it's, um, you know, potentially like if you would have asthma or something like that, maybe it would be somewhat less of an issue. Alkyd still put off a stink to me. Okay. So it's, you're, you're still. Now what makes it, so that's where the old one was. This is just, this is the light gel, okay? Does that mean so it's this lower is, in calories? Uh, well, I would jokingly say you could try, but you don't want, <laughs> clearly want to eat this. So it's thicker. But it's it's the light gel, right? Remember, this was the detail. Right. So it's supposed to be more fluid. But this is gel. Yes, so you're going to need to write that down. Just look oh, on yeah. light gel. All right. I'm starting to run out of room with all these things. Yeah, and I mean, we've got... 
Windsor Newton, we've got Gamblin. And Gamblin makes a solvent free one as well as just their Galkid. Galkid is Gamblin's version of it, right? Sennelier makes, they call theirs fluid dry and flow and dry. So fluid is obviously your fine detail. Flow is what this one is that you're going to be using, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody and their brother has kind of a, a version of this. Even M. Graham makes one that's made, they use walnut oil for their paints. So they make a walnut based. Mm hmm alkyd medium okay so very minor difference between the two but well it's it's thixotropic so when you mix it it's mm -hmm. going to get liquidy so okay. that was what i wanted you to see yeah even though there's a fine detail do you necessarily need it not necessarily not necessarily i mean i guess if you're painting with a two hair brush maybe it's that little bit finer and you yeah. don't have to try to to thin it down to make it Right. Kind of more fluid as you go along. Right, right. Okay. So then we go to just the regular gels. Okay. Okay. And, and depending on the brand, they've got um, the Liquid Original. There's the Galkid that's slightly um, a little bit runnier. There's um, Sennelier's. We'll try this so that we're using just something that's even, obviously this is much thicker looking. Right. What is it? Sennelier. Flow and dry. And the trick is, this is a glass bottle. This is where your little palette knife probably is going to come in handy because some of the other ones are plastic, so you can kind of gloop it out. Mm -hmm. See how much thicker that is? Oh, Whoa. Amy. <sighs> okay. You might have noticed a brown it. spot on this during Jerry's Live. That's that's the that's the prequel. It'll come up. Flow and, what, what is Flow it? and dry. Flow and dry. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that big of a deal. It is right. magical. Now I'm going to put a little bit more in here so you can see it. All right. So that's just what the kind of traditional bodied alkyd gel is going to be. Now, is there a, a ratio or anything that people should keep in mind or is it just pretty much whatever's reasonable it's it's kind of whatever's reasonable but kind of a couple of the websites that i read that were kind of anti al kids were saying that that this is kind of like you need to keep in mind that this is very much like painting oils over acrylics mm -hmm. it can be done obviously you can't do acrylics over oils right but it's still a synthetic polymer mm -hmm. right that potentially is, is going to be slipperier and have adherence problems so <clears> probably <throat> if you're using like there's some people that will use this to the nines really thin their stuff out to do an underpainting but that may make it if you're really thinning it where you've got a high percentage of a, an alkyd base and right. then you're going over it with oils potentially you could have adhesion problems later on especially on something that's a flexible surface. Right. So what I would really recommend based on all the things that I've read is if you're using a product like this, yes, use less and less and less as you kind of get where it's where you're making it more fat of just the oil paint itself as you're getting to top layers. But it sounds like it would help with bonding and adhesion, especially if you want to paint on a flexible surface. I see. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what I would say uh, is probably going to be your better bet now. We're going to try all of these now, and and these to keep in mind can come in those bottle forms. They can also come in a paste form. That's the paste. Okay, that's not. This is still not an impasto. This will still thin down when you use a brush on it. Um, it's just, yeah. Go ahead and well, yeah, right. sure. Why not? Why don't you try some on for size? It's a CAS Alka Pro, the fast dry medium. Gel medium fast dry, excuse me. And CAS has their own line of alkyd paints, but then they also have mediums with it too, which a lot of people don't realize. You know, there's Grumbacher makes some thicker painting mediums. Permalba makes alkyd painting mediums. Um, Gamblin, Windsor Newton, there's, it's not just liquid like some, you know, instructors will use. 
Now see, that's a gel, but see how you still can thin it the more you brush it? Yeah. Yes. So it's that the fixotropic nature. That's going to be your word for the day. Fixotropic Yes, nature. whenever you hear fixotropic, scream real loud. <laughs> Sorry, I had to... Put a Pee Wee Herman reference yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why it's not? Monday. All right. So before we go to the impasto ones, then you also have a medium, which I don't think we need to show because the, it's not something that's really going to show on this. Right. But there, there is a slow dry version. This, the slow dry, especially Gamblin's, says that if you use it within your paints, it will be open for the whole day while you're painting, is which liquids are going to start setting up a but lot that's faster an than that. It is an alkyd. Uh, it's a slow dry. But it's just a alkyd. slow dry, yes. It, actually, it's a galkid. Galkid, yes, <laughs> meaning gamblin. Now, um, you can make your own alkyds. <gasps> this is just alkyd resin. That's just alkyd resin. Now, when we open the stuff, open it, but don't don't pop the top. Just open it. We just did this to look, and you could smell the. Cut it's this very, out. Very strong, and that's and that's something. Yeah, well, I think you can pry it up like a, a paint can. So you said not lip. to. No, because look at all the warnings on the back of this. Combustible inhalation of vapors may affect the brain, nervous system, or respiratory system. You gave me a bomb here. Okay, but see what I'm saying? So these are don't just wave the, that around at me. <laughs> these are the thinned down version of this. I see. This is something that that full strength. I mean, you don't want to use this number one just straight out without mixing other things with it. They put you know, oil, and then they put um, odorless mineral spirits to make these. Right. So this is, by nature, actually pretty bad stuff before it's watered down. So although you can make your own mediums, they can come pre-made. But the deal is, these are still obviously do have some, you know, you want ventilation yeah, with I, it. I'm just because it's right not that you... Well, do, could you smell it just I, with the <clears> opening, <throat> even though it's closed? Yeah, we were not A happy year about of that. our life just got sucked away. Oh, at least. All right, so now we're going to try some of the impasto mediums. This okay? is the fun stuff. This is the fun stuff. Now, um, impasto medium doesn't necessarily mean that it's alkyd base, okay? Grumbacher makes an MG white. It's an underpainting white. Michael Goldstein underpainting white. Well, there you go. Are you fast drying and opaque? I am Is fast drying and certainly opaque. <laughs> okay. Let's pick another color for these. And pasty white. Well, we better do blue then so it can show up. Okay. <laughs> You're doing a new board? Yes, yeah, sir. I think that that's... Th th this will be for our impasto stuff. Because not all this... Although some of it's alkyds, it's not all alkyds. So just write impasto on, on one end and kind of push your paint out on the other. Now this is, it's, it's heavy bodied titanium white, but it's got thickeners in it. It's used for surface texture underpainting. Now they do, they actually say for rigid surfaces only and that it's fast drying. So probably it's, it will crack if it's not. I never had a brushable Sharpie. I'm I know it's, uh, it's, took me by surprise. it's like somewhat unsettling and then it's like, oh, that's so nice. Do you need a different color or are you good? No. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> wow. Okay, and with this, we're gonna put put a little blob next to this, and you can just mix those together. So, so you can see the. I see you can see some of the. I'm sure it's alkyd resin. Oi. Looks well, like when, spit up. You, you, here, we can we can. This is what it looks it like. First, is that what spit up looks like? Actually, it looks like a big bird turned to me. We all see different things in art. <laughs> I've got two kids that it doesn't look like. It's still somewhat goopy. All right. This looks like it's going to be a blast to work with. All yeah. right, so MG White. Uh, Grumbacher MG Underpainting White. Grumbacher. And if you want, just play with that with like a palette knife or something, kind of move it around if you need to kind of take the... Um, Take a rag and kind of get some of the moisture out of it, or it's up to you. Suck up the... Yeah. Which when people are like, oh my gosh, it's separated. That's just the nature of white pulls. This is some chunky stuff. It's for underpainting. It's for getting texture on there. You can mix color with it if you want to mix a little color to see. 
Yeah, I'll make some color in it just so that, uh, you know, we have yeah, a little contrast. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a little color. You can tell you're used to that palette knife. Oh, uh, this is the one. Just the dexterity. It is my magic wand. It is. Oh, it's so chunky. <laughs> So well, you can see how that you could get some peaks and valleys and texture yeah. for, for that. Yep. Drippy. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So then the Alcad Pro makes, which is something that everybody else just kind of makes a gel, they make a fine texture Alcad resin. Mm-hmm. They make a textured, and then they also make an impasto. Okay. Now, because I've never used these, I would like to use them to see if there's really that much of a difference. Because right. rather than somebody having to buy them to determine it, right? I say that we that we. So Sperm. I'm going to put. Yep. Let's put them out right. Um, textured, medium, fine. We'll do them on the bottom, and then here, that one. Then that one. Okay. So I'm going to put some out. And now textured and pasta mm -hmm. medium. Mm -hmm. If you want, we can, put, we can put more out. It'll be easier to see on the board. People yell at me when I use too much. If it's already open, what are we going to do with it? We might as well. Textured, impasto. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's right in front of me. It's Monday. Wow. You can smell the alcohol from there. Uh, it's Tuesday. In their land, it's Tuesday. In our land, it's Monday. That's why we always look a little glazed over for the after parties. That's right. Because we've been <laughs> glazing. Well, that too. See, so yeah, okay, so yeah, let's add that. Yep, and then there's going to be, oh, here, we yeah. can, bombs away. Okay, so you can definitely see the difference between those yeah, two. See, like this is why it's good to. C A S. Mm hmm. Impasto. Mm hmm. <laughs> this is particularly light. When I picked yes. this up, it mm -hmm. is way lighter. Well, so they're probably using probably some silicas or things like that as kind of filler for that texture, right? Right. That definitely gets more impasto as yeah. you go. That is wow. A but they yeah they're very they're very light compared to other hard other brands. Um, you can are heavier. So formulation on these all can be extremely different. Okay. And there's even the solvent free. Gamblin makes the solvent free gel it's not as thick as these all right so do you want to just try mixing a little color in with them sure, each to kind of that. see because that'll be so when they dry we'll be able to see them all right we'll start with this textured medium mm -hmm. fine that takes the color pretty nice yeah it does yeah and this is his cyan and yeah look mm -hmm. how it still stays now th for the record uh, again because these are are out good, they're going to be fixotropic so they're going to get fluid, and then they're going to thicken back up as they kind of settle. Okay. Right. So and since that's the fine texture, that's going to be the finest of... Yeah, go ahead and put a little in that, and that's good, because then we're kind of seeing how it levels out with the, the paint being mixed in. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing with this is it ain't as shiny. Yes, it's going to be more matte, especially the, the impasto because of the additives that they add to give it body, mm -hmm. tend to make it matte out the more you go. Okay. And finally, we're gonna use this impasto. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's thick. Wow, it's like really pasty, isn't it? That's awesome. You know, I can relate. <laughs> yes. So, you know, let's just, let me just mix up a large amount here and just kind of show you impasto. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this stuff holds its peaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you mixed all the color with that, it would be a lot. Yeah. So, all right. So, then there's all these different brands, right? Mm -hmm. They've got um, 
we'll do Lucas and we'll do, we exclusively sell this Permalba one. I've never used it, so I'm curious to see how it stacks up against the Lucas just so that when, when people ask, I know. Um, okay, so Lucas yes, painting butter. Lucas is definitely our most popular because you can get it in those giant cans. So if you if you were into impasto. Or giant cans. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, if your mediums need to come in a vat, you might like Lucas painting butter. <laughs> and uh, that's the uh, That's the Weber. Permalba impasto gel medium. Yeah, I mean, these have to have the alkids in them because can you imagine how long they would take to dry? 18 years. If, yeah, if they did not have that in them. All right, let's put out some painting butter. Butter. Here, I'll plug in the Permalba. No, one at a time, maybe. Give them a wow. Wow, that's quite a glob you put out there. Okay, now i got to match that. Okay. Yeah, see how this is... This is higher peaked, it'll probably, you know, once you start mixing paint in and the movement, it'll flatten it out some. But you can really see, this is where you can really see the beeswax that they put in it. Because it's not oiling out? Yeah, it's not oiling out and it's it's a little bit softer. See how this has like a little harder yep. body? It's just got that little bit softer. Don't let that fool you because when you start mixing paint in, it still stays All nice right. and thick. Let's see if I don't so. get fooled. Makes me want to sing that Who song that they did for like CSI or whatever. Yeah, see, that's look at how much body that has, even though how soft that looks. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> misleading. It is. Which is why we want to show it. We want to be able to see, you know, what that does. Okay. Now that Weber fast dry. Mm hmm says two to four hours that's that's fast. crazy crazy fast yes see now that. the lucas i think on average is six hours now with these with the, the permalba and the lucas it says you should only use up to 50 percent medium for when you're actually painting with it up to okay. that's still a pretty high percentage it is a pretty high percentage but just like we've discussed because it's um you know, a resin medium you want to, for the cohesion of your paint film, mm -hmm. you really want to have, a, you know, the higher the your actual oil is that's in it, the better that that's going to be. The painting butter definitely seems a little smoother, mm -hmm. but this is, this is getting softer as I work it. Yes. Okay. Arm wasn't off. Let me turn that off because I felt the vibration. You're always feeling vibrations. I guess. Well, what's going on down there? That's what you. That's what you do to me. <laughs> Good vibration. Yeah. You see how much smoother that that yeah. looks. That still got a lot of body. So that's a, a big. That's almost. That's almost starts looking more like this does to yes. me. Even though you can see that this is a gel, this doesn't have the as much like physical texture in there. But this ha maintains the gloss. Yes, it's definitely going to be glossier. Anything that where it says like a gel to it is going to have a higher gloss to it. Okay. Okay. So with those, um, now, <coughs> Windsor Newton makes one. This is how you can tell the difference kind of between those two. The Oleo Pasto levels out more like this. This is going to be thicker like the painting butter. That's something that people always ask. Okay. Because Windsor Newton's, you know, a popular brand that especially sure. people starting out know. Very accessible. That's yes, that's gonna that's gonna be your big difference between the two because oleo pasto sounds like a really strange It does. It's scary. Scary. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to these products that I we didn't even really realize that we had when oh. Katie and I were researching this. We're like, what the heck is that? It says in pasta medium we get it in. This says extender medium for Williamsburg. This is actually a marble dust based. So this is Go ahead and write down Sennelier, Sennelier and pasta medium. Now these are designed to thicken the paint film. The maximum you want to do with the oil paint is one to one. Really with these, more oil paint is, is better because 
they've got that marble dust in them so they could crack, especially if you're wanting to use them on a really more flexible surface. Use your smarts and put more oil in them so that they are more flexible. I don't know where I put my E so high, but. Oh, this looks uh, like. Just, you know. Yeah. This is, it looks like almost like shower grout this, or something. No, what this reminds me of is like modeling paste for acrylics. Yes. Yes. But there's usually marble dust and. Yes. Now this is the the Wil Williamsburg extender one. The print on this was like so tiny. I we both were like, "There's, uh, we need a magnifying glass." Williamsburg straight up on their website says marble dust barium sulfate, which you'll see the color difference between these two okay. when we put it down. Which bar barium sulfate's put in in oh, so a I lot of write, whites. Write this down. Yes, and then linseed oil. Williamsburg. So, and, and in looking at them, it looks like the Williamsburg may be slightly more flexible. But when people are like, well, you know, I love oils, but you can't get the impasto effects that you can with acrylic mediums. Guess what? You, you can. There's not an excuse to not, if you really do like oils, other than the dry time, right. obviously. Um, which... Funnily enough, uh, when when we were doing the varnishing thing, we learned that heavy bodied acrylics and acrylic gels and stuff can take just as long to dry as oil paints fully. So right. kind of starting to undermine the, the point of, especially if you're using high texture. So this is going completely matte. Yes. Which is expected when you add right. marble dust. But you can just see how much texture, because this is a video on texture. It is that adds to it. Yes, and obviously you're you're using less than what the 50-50 would be to, to be able to color it and prove the point, but still see the, the medium there. But you can definitely see, you can get some. Should I add more? Uh, no, no, that's fine, that's Cause, because we'll be able to see. Okay. Clean my neck. Now see how this this looks oilier? Yes. It, I think it's got a much higher linseed oil percentage to it. You know, just with all these things, make sure that you read. They come with directions. They come with cautionary labeling. Um, you know, it says what they're going to do. It gives you advice for it. A lot of the company websites also will give you advice. So you can always either research ahead of time. If you, you know, just want to kind of go off the deep end and, and buy some different mediums Aww. to. <laughs> <laughs> that was not me flicking off the camera. That was. <laughs> That was you reacting from getting icky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wow. Icky. That's nice. Yeah, actually, this is, yeah. You can really smooth. see more sheen to it. Yeah. Wow. Here, okay. I'll take that. <laughs> Did you get more on you? <sighs> Wait, what'd you call me? Did you just lick your hand and. I licked my clean hand. Okay. Oh, God. And then rub my it's dirty like, hand. It's like having, having kids. What are you putting in your mouth? Oh. All right. Okay, so the last thing, last thing we're working with are the wax-based impasto mediums. All right. Those are so, sh look, you can see them starting to dry a little bit. But look how shiny it still is there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like pretty? it. I'm a fan. All right. Let's put this over here. So I'm just going to write wax. Wax-based impasto mediums. All right, now there's different varieties of these. They're the, um, for a thinner version, we're not gonna show this because we would need to heat this up in a tub. Um, the resin oil wax medium from Michael Harding's gives paint a nice satin sheen. It's thinner, mm -hmm. but you can see it's a little bit thick at the bottom. With this, you would want to put it in a pan of warm water, mm -hmm. let that wax kind of become more liquefied and stir it before <clears> you <throat> used it. But it's a way to kind of still have some brightness have it be thinner, but have it kind of give more of a satiny look to it. So wax doesn't have to be necessarily for impasto. Okay. It, it can do other things. It can alter sheen or things like that. A lot of mediums that are matting mediums, a lot of times will have wax in them. Okay. Because it's softer, it still lets, you know, the color and light through. So we've got, um, Sommelier makes a Veronese medium. I think we're going to try all of these just because we can... People are always asking kind of what the difference is, and there's only five of them, so we'll be able to show that. Is there a thicker 
or do, do we have a screwdriver to open these? I don't want to bend a pallet knife. I'm sure we can find somebody to get okay. a screwdriver. We can do these two while we can open three while we get that. I just don't want to damage so pallet pour knives. So pour this out? Yeah, stick some out there. It smells... Like winter. Like <laughs> winter. Sure, maybe. All right, what's the okay. next one? Okay, the Michael Harding's beeswax paste. And I should take that out with a... Thank you so much. Ooh, that's waxy. Dust the beeswax. <laughs> Who knew? Okay. Put Dorland's wax medium. I think we're going to need more... Uh of these blotting towels. Yeah, we might. Ooh. Oh, there's paper towels over here. We can Untouched. Some. It looks like coconut oil. Almost, it looks it? just like coconut oil. Look at that, like an iceberg. Wow, that's really pretty. Does it smell solventy at all? There's so much solvent in the air, I don't think I can smell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. All right, Williamsburg, why don't you put those Further down, maybe over here, so you can pull it to Williams, the side. Yeah, Williamsburg down here. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's not really solventy smelling at all. Now the Dorlands actually is wax and resin mixture. They say something great that none of the other ones on their literature said. One to three parts, so one part medium to three parts color. When you're painting, not for obviously demonstrating, that's not what we're doing. You reverse that for encaustics. So three parts medium, one part color, and you can use the Dorlands with encaustics. I see. Okay, because it's because it's got resin in it as opposed to some of these have solvent in them. Right. So this if you if you want to be able to use that with your encaustics, Dorlands is the one to use that with. All right, so then the Gamblin cold wax medium. Yeah, the Williamsburg definitely has more solvent. Can't really smell it in there, but I know it's gam sol, so that's probably why. All right. Now, the Sennelier Veronese medium, it says that it provides a much quicker drying time mm -hmm. than typical wax-based mediums, so there's probably some definite solvent in that one. I'll get you some paper towels. I like these fancy ones we have. I know. I didn't know we had the budget for that. Well, only for the six. Oh. That's, that's why you're getting regular paper towels now. Oh. Messy Marvin. All right. Um, let's pick, what about something? Cad Red like Light. Ride? Yeah. Or would you rather not have a cadmium? No, it's fine. There's a, an ultramarine. Look, if you'd well, I mean, this is really opaque. Should I use the ultramarine just so we can show how? That might be nicer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just in case you get any on you, that's... It's not the end of the world. Well, you did put gloves in a bottle on, didn't you? I did. Be prepared. See, you're very trainable. I am. Like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Being your trained dogs, <laughs> here I am. Well, why do you think they sent me in the Yeah. Room? Yeah. <laughs> it's that it's that whistle that you can't nobody else can hear but yep, you. I just perk up. <laughs> All right, so just start mixing yes, it in. Yes, please, please do. All right, we got some ultramarine blue. We got some Sennelier. It's not pronounced Sennelier. It's just me. <laughs> Sennelier. Oh, in parts of the South, it might be. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Inadvertently. <might> Sennelier <laughs> medium, please. <laughs> Ver Vernies. Vernies. Yeah. Vernies Sanders. Okay, now it says with about the gambling. Wow, that's, look at the nice sheen that that has. And that's something that a lot of times when you use the wax, it goes either to, um, 
either really satiny, almost matte, or very matte. Mm -hmm. That's nice because that gives you still some nice sheen to it. Um, it does say that on the, the Gamblin one, it makes an ultra thick matte impasto. Um, that to make it higher gloss, you can mix in Galkid medium. Mm -hmm. So then you're putting Alkid back in it, which is, is still fine, but that'll give it gloss if you want that. It will thin it down, obviously, some. So you want to use the thicker of the Galkid mediums. Um, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the Michael Harding one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, now door, Dorland's. Yeah, the Michael Harding one does say it's got a high oil content mm -hmm. with it. So it's linseed oil and beeswax. So it's probably going to take a lot longer to dry, but... This will still Man, be. if you want the shine, though, look at that. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's why we'll have these for, right. for when the show is, so we will know what, what it's taken for all this time. Uh, should I go to Williamsburg or the Doors one? Uh, try the Dorlands. Oh, I like this. Oh, wow. Look at how nice and matte that is. Can you see over my pile, Will? Mm -hmm. Wow. That is a really nice look. Yeah. See, I like, I don't mind the it being matte looking. I think it's a neat. And it feels really nice. Yes. Like it feels smooth. Oh, look at the nice little pickup. Yeah. That's, yeah. Ah! Okay. This is why I brought the whole roll. Yeah. <laughs> and why they only gave you the six. Thank you. Wax medium. <laughs> Williamsburg's wax medium. See, that looks similar, but it just looks a little, I don't know, less smooth and subtle. That door looks a little a nice, grainier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very a very good uh, description. It definitely has a much shinier sheen to it, though, than this does. Yes. Shinier sheen. Which I've never used. I've only ever used the um, Gamblin, so this is a really interesting way to see. I'm glad I could teach other you varieties. Something. You are. All right. Now we're going to go into this Gamblin coal yep. wax medium. Yep. Oh, well, I guess we're going, we're going all in. Now, the Williamsburg does have some Damar resin in it, so that's probably why it's a little brighter. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like this stuff. That's too. really nice. Oh wow. Yeah, that? that's that's what I've used before. That, I think that that looks like it keeps a little higher peaks than the Dorlands even. Mm hmm Oh. Did yeah. you you didn't use it didn't look like you used extensively more. I did use a big chunk of did that. Did you more yeah. of it? Okay. I did use a that big still chunk. looks very they both look very nice. See all those give very different these look very similar. But those give a much shinier, but a little bit grainier texture to it. Right. So that's, this is why we do this. This is for people to for be able to see. And, you know, before you have to invest, I mean, some of these are very inexpensive. Some are very expensive just by default in the production and, you know, the chemicals and the knowledge and know-how that goes into them. And, I mean, obviously, people like Michael Harding, it's handmade still. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's going to make the price higher. But this makes it so you don't have to keep trying multiple things to, to decide what's going to work for you. You have a little bit of knowledge. You see how it's used. Right. It helps make more educated buying decisions. Buying decisions. Which is what it's all about. Any uh, Any last words? I, I, this was fun. This was I, fun. I, I, I like mixing was, stuff. Yeah, uh, that's kind of why we did that over on your side. It'd be easier for the camera, and, and you seem to enjoy that. And it's a, it's a good way for you to learn more about oil painting. Thank you for joining us for another Jerry's Live After Party. You can follow Amy at Amy Gardner Dean on Facebook, and you can follow me at Mike Not Jerry on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Do you have an Instagram? I do. Oh, okay. It's Amy Gardner Dean also. Okay, well, look, it doesn't matter. You can go to either place. I. I think I have a Facebook too, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram is where it's at. Yeah. yeah. We uh, we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at the next after party. Yes, and 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 it's pretend Taco Tuesday, so we should hug it out. It is Taco Night. Oh <laughs> yes. Like... <laughs> we gotta go. It's Taco yeah, Night. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Don't wave. Why?